Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's presentation. I'm Tammy Diedrich, the Managing Editor of IBM Systems Magazine, and I'm the moderator for this event. Today's webinar is sponsored by BMC and CompuWare and is titled, Lower Your Mainframe Costs with Groundbreaking Integration of Industry-Leading Products. Our featured speakers today are Jay Lipovich, Neil Blagrave, and Spencer Hallman. Jay Lipovich directs solutions marketing for the BMC Software Z Solutions Optimization Mainframe Business Unit. His experience includes design of strategies and solutions for cost-effective infrastructure and data management, design and performance testing for a mainframe hardware vendor, and infrastructure performance and capacity consulting. Neil Blagrave is responsible for the strategic direction of BMC Software's mainframe cost and performance optimization portfolio of products. Prior to joining BMC in 1999, Neil was the technical manager for the database administration and QA teams at Air Canada and was a solutions integration consultant for IBM Global. Spencer Holman is the product manager for CompuWare's web-based products. Prior to joining product management, Spencer provided sales and technical support for CompuWare mainframe MIPS management solutions since 2000. His diverse experience includes programming on both distributed and mainframe, mainframe platforms, providing help desk support, and working in the operations research field. Today, these gentlemen will share how you can reduce costly MLC software bills, pinpoint application tuning opportunities based on cost impact, and use automation to drill into real-time application CPU spikes. Following the presentation, we will have a brief Q&A period so please feel free to enter your questions in the question panel on your screen anytime during the presentation. Now, without further ado, thanks again for joining us. And Jay, I will turn the presentation over to you. Thank you, Tammy. And good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are. It's our pleasure to have you join us. We're excited about the potential that the integration between BMC and CompuWare has. We're exciting, excited about what this can provide to customers who are working to drive down the cost of the mainframe while they deliver the services that the mainframe is so famous for. So the topics we'd like to cover in this session are, are to first examine how the role of the mainframe is evolving as more companies engage in digital business models, and some of the cost drivers that mainframe IT is dealing with. And then we'd like to share the approaches that we've worked on together to integrate our solutions that are capable of helping customers drive down those mainframe costs. As Tammy mentioned, if you have questions, please submit those and we'll cover as many questions as we can when we get to the conclusion. It's no surprise to anyone that there's a lot of disruptive technology being used today in, in the business world. And most of that has an impact on the things we do in the mainframe. For many customers, and we're assuming those of you on the call would agree, the mainframe is a foundation for much of the digital business. It doesn't matter whether you're trying to do a credit card transaction or you're using your smartphone to deposit a check without ever going near the bank itself. Whether you consume products, uh, it's your, your favorite beverage in the morning or the afternoon, or it's acquiring uh, clothing or other durable goods from retailers, the mainframe plays a role in, having, in helping all of those things to happen. Even with the weather, the National Weather Service packages forecast information, and that information is packaged and distributed via mainframes. It was interesting to note on, on the website of a, an online trading, stock trading company, where they highlight that it's now possible to use your iWatch to watch your portfolio and to execute trades. So the activity of digital business, which, which allows customers to engage at any time and in any way, for many people, come back to the mainframe. And as a matter of fact, IBM 
has quoted the, the number of 91% of new customer-facing applications will access mainframes. And when you think about all of the different types of, of new customer applications being developed and, and uh, provisioned out to customers to use, uh, that's an amazing number that comes back to rely on the mainframe. So as we've talked with customers going through these digital transformations, uh, we've, we've heard a concern with three areas in particular. Uh, cost has been a concern for a number of years, and it continues to be a top concern. But if you think about the way your organization is engaging in digital business, digital business has a basic assumption that by doing a digital engagement, you can lower the unit cost of whatever you do, whatever, whatever business you're in or whatever service you provide in a, in a government or service organization, you should be able to lower the unit cost with digital engagement. Uh, so the pressure on the mainframe to help lower cost and help become more efficient in a digital model is increasing. The second area is in the area of data. When we look at, at the cost information and how it will feed into what that means for data, we see some interesting indicators. This data is looking at 10 years of, of key mainframe indicators, uh, everything from uh, the cost per MIP to the percent of spend for hardware and software and the percent of spend for the mainframe in the total IT budget. What's noticeable is not surprisingly the cost per the cost of the hardware as a percentage of the budget has gone down. We we continue to see IBM delivering uh, price performance improvements with with more power and more capability and reduced cost for the hardware. But when we look at the the trend for the percent of the mainframe spend as a, a portion of the total IT spend, that's actually increasing. And then when we look at the percent of software as, the, as a percent of the IT spend, we see the, the large increase number. And so as we, as we focus in on how to drive down cost, one of the areas we focus in is on the software. Now, driving cost concerns the other direction is data. So what's happening with data is that in the digital economy, Customers expect to be able to access anything at any time. When you pull up your smartphone and you want to go look at uh, the airline schedule for your flight, perhaps, that you're taking tomorrow, you expect that information to be there, even if it's 2 o'clock in the morning. So th the expectation is that the data is always available and there is zero outage time. And where we used to talk about 24 by 7, but it was kind of a, you know, it was expressed as 24 by 7, but everybody knew you didn't really have to be 24 by 7. Uh, now the expectation is there isn't any outage time. Accompanying that's this explosion of data. As we, as we recognize how much data we can gather and how that data can give us more information about our customers and how to better serve them, we keep coming up with new ways to use the data. And then, of course, we've, we've figured out that data doesn't always have to be uh, a series of numbers or a series of, of letters that describe a, a name, an address, a birth date, and so on. New types of data for some industries are critical. So you think about the insurance business. In addition to knowing the policyholder and the date of the, the start of the policy and what the coverages are, if there has been an accident, the data that wants to be included there include photographs of the damage and photographs of the environment where this happened. And that new type of data, that unstructured data, is being added to our databases and create substantial challenges for managing the mainframe. All of this is designed to help companies get to market faster and increase their market share. And what we know is that this really isn't yesterday's DB2. It looks a whole lot different than it did when it came out uh, 30 years ago. 
And finally, for the infrastructure, the, the biggest challenge we see and we hear from customers is that the patterns of access, which had become so familiar to most of us, have now changed. We used to know when the peaks happen, we used to know for individual critical applications what their pattern of activity looked like, and we knew how to respond when we saw things that were abnormal. Well, most of that activity is becoming very unpredictable. In addition, our customers have increased their expectations around performance. So as a result, the, in addition to expecting 24 by 7 always on uh, availability, the time with which we have to respond to a customer request, whether they're making it from a smartphone, from a PC, or from uh, some other new type of device, the time that they expect a response is measured in seconds and, and parts of seconds. So we have to be able to find, identify, resolve, and conclude problem conditions, and that includes applications that may not be performing at the level that we're expecting. But one of the things that we're learning and that we're hearing about from customers is that we no longer know what we used to know. Our, all of our tribal knowledge about how applications perform and, and what these performance patterns are and when we can expect things to happen, those are all changing. And so we have to consider how do we keep up with those changes in the digital environment. One of the ways we, we also try to understand focus areas and concerns is, is through a series of surveys. BMC Software runs an annual mainframe survey. These are the results from the 2014 survey, and our survey for 2015 uh, will go out uh, actually in just uh, another couple of weeks. Uh, we have approximately 1,200 respondents when we do these surveys. And one of the questions we ask is, what are the top priorities? And for the fifth year in a row, IT cost reduction and optimization was a top IT priority for the mainframe IT market. But it's also interesting that the number two priority is availability. And, and the fact is, the mainframe is known for rock-solid performance and availability, and so availability kind of ranks number two. But if you happen to be having performance problems, availability is probably your number one concern at that point. And the third top priority is application modernization. So we, we see so many sites modifying existing applications, which, which have such a wealth of business logic built into them. They're modifying those applications to either be web-enabled or to be mobility-enabled, or they're borrowing from those applications to build new applications. And this whole process of application modernization is designed to help the business enter the digital world and compete more effectively. But one of the challenges is in moving quickly, it's very easy to introduce a small change that creates performance problems. So being able to identify within an application how it's performing and where, where the bottlenecks may be within the code is becoming even more critical. We asked a follow-up question to this, which I didn't include the detailed graph, but we asked, if you're focused on cost reduction, what, what are your top activities? And the number one is to reduce the resource usage during the peak processing intervals. So when we step back and analyze the cost, since that's such a big concern, uh, we, we understand where the money is going to in each of these categories. As we noted, the hardware has been declining, the cost of people, uh, has been reduced and is pretty steady. Um, the cost of independent software vendor, ISV software, such as BMC and CompuWare, is only about 10% of the total mainframe spend. The biggest single cost item, 30% or more, depending on the organization, is allocated to the IBM software that's charged as uh, monthly license charge or MLC software. And this is the operating system, the, the DB2 databases, the, the IMS or CICS transaction systems, the middleware, and so on. 
the, the key software that runs the platform and the applications that matter. So we want to pause and ask a question now. This is the first of the, the polling questions that uh, we had mentioned we would be asking, and that is uh, we, we know that, that some of you have joined because you're using uh, some of the products from either BMC or CompuWare, uh, and you're interested in, in the integration we're delivering. So we would ask you to respond if, if you're using any of these solutions, the cost analyzer from BMC, main view from BMC for monitoring, uh, strobe from CompuWare, uh, please indicate on the, uh, the poll that's on your right-hand panel. And uh, as, as the moderator mentioned, uh, remember to click the Submit button. Uh, and your, uh, your response will be recorded. So that brings us to the partnership. If you examine what CompuWare and BMC have been doing over the last several years, uh, they've been focused on, on really three things. Uh, one is to focus on how to reduce the cost of the mainframe for our customers. A second is to address the concern with the skills that are available to help the platform continue to be viable. Uh, and the third is to do those things through innovation. So we believe you will, you will find that most of the innovation that's been delivered in the last two years for managing the mainframe has come from BMC software and from CompuWare. So it made sense for us to, to get together. We have a common interest in helping our customers, and we have combined portfolios that actually have very little overlap. So BMC software is concentrated in one area for uh, the IT operations management space of monitoring and database management, cost management, and CompuWare is focused in the application, the application development space. And so this was an opportunity for us to integrate our products. Uh, and as, as noted on the slide, we also, uh, we're going to eat some of our own cooking. Uh, we've standardized on using each other's products within our own operations as well. So one of the areas we both companies have focused on is, is in reducing cost. And this is another uh, survey question from our mainframe survey. And we, we said, you know, for those reducing costs by focusing on, on the peak, uh, what are the activities that you regularly undertake to reduce or limit the peak and thereby hold down costs? And you'll see that the, the top three are statistically are, are essentially number one, moving workloads. Uh, and number two, right after that, is to tune workloads to reduce the MSU consumption. And that's the opportunity where we saw the integration of BMC and with the CompuWare solutions to enable customers to do a, an even better job of identifying the opportunities to reduce cost and then using uh, that identification to get the organization aligned to making the changes. So from the product perspective, the, the way we approached the, the integration was with uh, two different BMC solutions and one of the CompuWare solutions. Uh, the first BMC solution is called Cost Analyzer for Z Enterprise. You'll see it abbreviated and, and even uh, talked about in shorthand as CASI. Uh, Cost Analyzer analyzes the, the SMF and RMF data to understand the MLC charges and the cost drivers, and then provides a, a what-if capability for being able to answer questions such as, if we tuned a workload, how much money could we save? And it predicts then the MLC cost savings av available for that. BMC MainView is a monitoring solution that does monitoring and automation of ZOS, CICS, DB2, IMS, uh, IP, middleware, and so on. From the CompuWare perspective, Strobe is uh, the leading product for identifying where in the code of an application uh, the time is being spent so that inefficiencies can be spotted easily and 
organizations can tune that code to reduce the consumption, reduce the footprint, and, and reduce the hardware and the software costs. So we saw the opportunity to integrate these products, and what we'll share with you are two use cases. Uh, use case one is using cost analyzer to spot where in the where the peak exists that we might be able to reduce the cost and then use strobe to identify how to make the reduction and then if that reduction uh, were made in the application code go back to cost analyzer and understand what the what the financial impact would be the second case is is the real time case of how do i manage my cost and how do i make sure that applications are performing appropriately. So using main view to identify high usage conditions and identifying the applications that might be causing it and to be able to use that information to invoke strobe so that strobe can provide the detail that explains exactly where the time is being spent and provides the opportunity for an organization to do, organiza to do uh, application tuning. So with that introduction, what I'd like to do is turn, at this point, the, the uh, discussion over to Neil Blagrave and to Spencer Hallman to take you through some of the details of the two use cases. Well, thank you, Jay, and hello, everybody. Uh, this is Neil Blagrave speaking. Um, so we'll, we'll step through the first use case, which is essentially CASI um, integrating with, with Strobe. Um, the problem that we're, we're addressing really is to how do you pinpoint the specific opportunities that are in your environment to to reduce your MLC charges? Um, it's not always easy to understand which intervals are the peak, and we can help you identify that in CASI. But then understanding which workloads are actually driving those peaks and which ones would give you the best bang for the buck, if you will, if you were to tune them. So where do you focus your attention? Where do you focus your attention um, so that it matters at the end of the day? So the solution that we're proposing that we will deliver later this um, this quarter is using CASI to determine and identify the the peak intervals, the intervals that are driving um, your MLC cost. And from that point, using our workload view perspective to drill into iStrobe to initiate a deeper analysis into the specific components that are actually driving that, that CPU consumption. And then with the iStrobe analysis in hand, understanding what can be uh, optimized, what can be tuned, coming back towards CASI to close the loop, if you will, to identify the potential impact, financial impact of, of tuning those workloads. Now, the value that we see that we know our customers um, will, will realize, they've actually um, told us this as part of our um, discovery process of understanding which use cases made the most sense for our customer base, that it helps them to quickly identify um, and, and assess, understand, identify the potential benefits of performance tuning. So again, focusing your attention on what matters the most. And if you can focus your attention, your tuning efforts on the right workloads, not just any workload, but the right workloads, you will, um, as a result, reduce your MLC expenses. Now, this is um, a visual example of, of the use case. This is the, the monthly summary report in CASI. So it's one of, the, um, one of the dashboards that we provide in the tool. And you can see it down the, down the left-hand side. We're showing you the, the MLC products that are actually running in this environment, the CPCs, where they're running. And the next column over is the spark line, which represents the four-hour rolling average, and the red dot representing the peak for that product on that CPC. And, of course, we're we're showing you the cost for each product, as well as other indicators like average cost per MSU and, more importantly, incremental cost per MSU that our customers are using today to help plan and, and, and manage their MLC costs. So from this perspective, we can actually, from this high-level overview, drill down into more specifics, the underlying uh, workload drivers that are causing your, these costs to be such as they are. Now, the spark line for as you see in this chart, is actually a drill down. And we'll drill down into, into the LPARs that are actually um, hosting ZOS version 1. If I had chosen 
for example, DB2, I just showed that the, the LPAR is running DB2. In this case, we'll see all the LPARs on this on this CPC. And I've actually sorted this view by Sysplex name to to understand, uh, to group things like things together. And I've also sorted it by the MSC utilization weight, the, the weighted bar that you see towards the right to see the um, the highest consuming LPARs, the ones that are contributing the most to my MLC costs. Now, from this view, we can drill down into the actual workloads that are driving um, this LPAR, these LPARs um, and their cost contribution to the overall peak. And we can drill down to one of six different workload types. In this case, I'll select um, service class. And now we're showing you the service classes that are actually running on these LPARs that I selected. And we're showing it to you in the order of um, their contribution to the peak. In this case, the ZOS peak, and you can see clearly that the batch importance five is a, is a prime contributor. Now, when you're focusing your tuning efforts, you really want to focus on the peak for our rolling average. Um, that's where you would start your your investigation. You can focus on any peak, but to reduce MLC costs, um, it's obviously best to focus on the peak for our rolling average. And using CASI zoom-in capabilities, we'll get a broader perspective of that particular time range. And to launch into, into Strove, it's simple as drag, identify the time interval that you want to look at. In this case, I'm looking at the, the four hours preceding the peak, including the peak interval, and selected the LPAR that I want to drill down into. And that so brings this... you into iStrove. So, so at this point, iStrobe's going to go out, and it has collected a lot of the SMF data um, on, in a real-time basis and is performing an analysis on that four-hour period. In this case, uh, October 16th, midnight to uh, um, October 16th, 4 a.m. And so you can see from the pie chart that JAZZ, which is basically our batch job, is what's consuming most of our CPU there. So 65% of the CPU. We do have some party tasks. We do have some TSO users, and we do have some um, SOS Unix running. We can see that, obviously, batch is consuming most of it at 65%. What we're also telling you at this time is that we're looking at if there are any strobe measurements taking during this rolling during this four-hour period. And you can see that one was taken. So it's going to be interesting to find out which, um, which strobe, what, what actually strobe measured. And then we're also looking at all of our strobe data to tell you that based on what we consider to be the high consumers, do we have any strobe measurements from those? So even though we didn't take a measurement of them during the rolling four-hour period, being able to go back and look at those profiles may be of benefit to us. And finally, the last, last column there, the total advents during the period, kind of gives you an idea, did we have some sort of advent storm during that period or not? So we're getting that data from our, from our Avondate product and reporting it through um, fault anal our fault analytics tool. So I'm going to drill down by clicking on the, uh, the JEZ um, hyperlink, and that's going to show me the jobs that are running. So um, these are the actual batch jobs that were running that were con contributing to that 65%. And we can see the number one job there was a job called SPHSCH0X, and he was the guy that was consuming the most CPU during that period of time. So if we're going to go out and we're going to start strobing um, job stat or jobs that are using a lot of CPU, um, that would be the number one that we'd want to cancel on. And there's also a column there that says add request. So by clicking on that, if we didn't measure it already, we could kick off, we could add a measurement request through strobe to measure this the next time it runs. <clears throat> So we also know that we did take some measurements during that period. We actually took one, and by clicking on the hyperlink for that one, uh, we can see the actual measurement we took, and, and it just so happens that we did measure that job, the SPH SCH06. So we can see the date and time it was measured, the total CPU it used, how much was COBOL, how much was, um, um, if there was any uh, Java or DB2 or Kix, they, they would show up as well, but this is mostly um, in COBOL. 
So if we click on that profile, so now I don't even have to go find the profile in, in iStro, I can click on that and it's going to hyperlink me right into the iStro profile. And so when I go into the iStore profile, I can actually see the line of code that's causing me most of my problems. So you can see 98% of my CPU is being driven by this overhead routine called IGZ CIN1, and you can actually see the line of code there. It's an inspect statement. Well, iStrobe is going to go on and it's going to tell me from its user help what that module actually does because you can see it's underlined. So I click on that and it's going to tell me what that module does and it's actually to give me some hints. So it's telling me that if you're using a reserved word or such as um, spaces or low values, that's going to drive more CPU through this overhead routine than if you're actually to convert that reserved word to a, to a literal value such as a uh, quote space quote and that would eliminate a lot of that, all of that CPU time used by IGZ CIN1. So I can, if I just make some uh, coding changes now, I can, I can eliminate 98% of the CPU on this batch job. And because it's running at my peak of my rolling four-hour average, it's going to have a direct effect on my, uh, my bill to IBM in the next month. So this brings us back to Kazi to close the loop. So given that we've identified a significant uh, tuning opportunity uh, and the workload that's running during peak, we can come back to CASI and uh, model changes to the workload. Now, when we designed CASI, um, we knew that we were providing insight and, and, and detail about the MLC cost drivers that were new to, to our customer base. And we also knew that as they were looking at, it, at this information, uh, sometimes for the first time in that particular way, um, they'd have the question that would come to mind in the moment, well, what if I changed that? What if I made a change to that workload? What if I moved that workload? Um, what if I, that workload was moved off platform? And what if it grew because I have a business growth plan for next quarter? Or what if it declined because, again, or declined in the business, causing that, that's, uh, that workload to, to actually shrink in size? So we gave that the capability to, to do those what-if scenarios within CASI. In this case, um, we'll model changing a workload, um, changing its size, and reducing its, its footprint by 20%. Now, what CASI will do from a, uh, under the covers perspective as it evaluates the model, um, it'll determine the peak reduction automatically, and it'll, it will look holistically across the entire CPC, and if you have a Sysplex uh, pricing in effect, it'll look across multiple CPCs. And it'll determine um, from a LPAR contribution perspective how it changed um, the peak for our rolling average, and how this LPAR's profile have changed, and how it affected its its position as, as a contributor to uh, the cost of the various MLC products. And as a result, we'll present with you to you um, the change report, the cost savings report. So these are the potential savings from that. Uh, tuning effort that could be realized in your environment, so the tune of $384,000 per year. And you notice that we've, that CASI has determined that multiple products will benefit from this change, so it's, it's impacting multiple peaks. Um, since in our case, the MLC product peaks are at different times uh, and different days, um, so it's that, that, that ripple effect, if you will, of determining the holistic change across the CPC is done automatically for you um, in CASI. Now, we've gone through a few slides here, but uh, it should be noted that um, from beginning to end, a modeling exercise can take you know, just a couple of minutes. In this case, the one I just did for you would take just a couple of minutes in real time. Now, the next use case <clears throat> was really looking at the, the more real-time perspective. CASI was looking at it from a historical perspective, and now looking at it from a, a more real-time perspective. Now, how do you identify and resolve um, normal application performance uh, to reduce your mean time to repair. How do you do it automatically? How do you do it immediately, if you will? So the solution that we, we came up with with our, our, our colleagues at CompuWare was to use MainView and to, use, to set the alarms within MainView to, to determine or to identify uh, looping. So if a, if a job is looping, for example, setting the criteria within MainView, within Alarm Manager, and setting those thresholds such that it would capture uh, looping. Uh, 
programs. Now, when those criteria and those thresholds would be uh, would be hit, would be met, um, automatically issue an alarm in a WTO. So you have the the audit trail in, in the log, but then launch strobe uh, automatically from main view alarm manager directly. Now, the the benefit, as you can imagine, is that you're you're, you're creating a strobe analysis at the point in time when a program actually needs to be analyzed um, so that when you come in the next day uh, or when you get called uh, on your pager to investigate the problem, you've actually got analysis that you can look at immediately and determine the root cause, correct it quickly, and, and move on. So speaking to the, the high availability, the extreme high availability of the mainframe and our, our never-ending desire to reduce the mean time to repair, um, this is an excellent way to, to automate and to intelligently automate uh, problem resolution. Now, a variation on, on the use case is to not do it quite so automatically. Um, some of our customers are, to be frank, still a little bit nervous about automation um, and may be concerned about uh, triggering a sto strobe analysis um, during a prime processing period and would rather do it manually just so they have control over it. So we have to respect that, uh, that reality so in the same kind of situation, um, we can do actually, actually do the launching uh, from main view. So using the job CPU view in main view for ZOS, um, do a right click and do a URL launch, launching contacts into iStrobe. And I'll show you how, what that would look like in a moment. So really what you're doing is you're, you're initiating strobes analysis, a simple point and click, and you're doing it um, in real time. Um, and now you can have the opportunity to actually run the analysis or schedule it at a later time. So this is an example of the uh, JCPU view in, in main view for ZOS. And similar to what uh, Spencer showed you before, uh, job SPHSCH0X is consuming a lot of CPU. And all we want to do now is right, right click on the job total CPU time column, the, the value in that column for that job. And we'll present you with the, the URL to, to launch iStrobe. So at this time, you're brought automatically into the iStrobe measurement screen, and the job name is brought for, forward for you automatically. So the only uh, decision the user really needs to make is how long that they want to measure for. So below the job name would be the amount of time that you would want to measure, and then once you're happy with that, on the lower right-hand corner, you can go ahead and hit the uh, submit button, and that would initiate the strobe measurement request, and the profile would be generated for you automatically. And so thank you. Spencer, thank you, Neil. We've given you a quick overview of the integration. We're excited about the potential that the combination of products can offer. Uh, I can tell you that we, we had conversations uh, prior to launching this partnership with uh, mutual customers uh, who themselves were very excited about what we could do by combining them. So we'd, we'd like to ask another polling question uh, to see if, if some of the things we've talked about are of interest to you. So you'll see the polling question again on the right-hand panel under polling. Uh, you can indicate uh, interest in one or more of the solutions that we've been talking about. And as noted before, please remember to hit the submit button tucked away at the bottom right uh, so that your, your information will be sent. So we see this as a starting point for the partnership. This is our initial integration efforts. We, we gathered together and actually came up with quite a long list of potential integrations that could be done between the products of the two companies. These were the ones we could deliver uh, most rapidly uh, to give value to customers as quickly as possible. So in early July, we will be delivering the integration capabilities that were talked about uh, both from cost analyzer to strobe and from main view to strobe. And as I said, we, we see this as a long-term partnership, so the R&D teams are evaluating those other integration use cases. Uh, they are reaching out to existing customers to identify which of those might have the most value so we can determine where we'd like to go from here. When you 
look at the value that we're trying to deliver. At, at one level, it helps our customers, mutual customers, to leverage the investment they've already made in BNC solutions uh, and or in CompuWare solutions and offers the opportunity to expand what's currently being done with either of those solutions individually to offer more cost savings potential, uh, the opportunity to improve performance and be able to stand up to some of the demands that are growing as a result of digital business. We've spoken with a number of customers who talk about the desire to tune applications, and one of the barriers frequently is getting everybody to agree that it's worth the effort. So by combining the, the pinpoint knowledge that Strobe will provide with the cost perspective that Cost Analyzer provides, it may make it an easier conversation for you to have. If you sit down with the business owner and with the development team, say, we, we've identified code that if we tune it, this application will perform better for our customers, and we've identified that if we tune it, it could reduce our MLC costs by $30,000 a month. So imagine the reaction in, in that conference room when you're able to quantify the value. Uh, by using the, uh, the monitoring to dynamically catch the hot spots, you're going to be able to identify some things automatically if you're, if you're uh, inclined to do that, um, that will give you the direction for where to, where to tune, where to use strobe, where to identify code, uh, things that you might overlook that you might not be able to see because of so much going on in the mainframe and because of the dynamic nature of accesses being driven in many cases by digital business. So we see a lot of benefit for customers in the approach that we're taking to combine the, the leading capabilities of both companies to drive down cost and deliver better performance out of the applications. At this point, we'd like to open up to, uh, to questions. We'll note, okay. on the screen that, we'll note on the screen that if you'd like more information, there are some links for uh, information about Strobe at CompuWare.com. Uh, the contact page, and for Cost Analyzer and MainView at BMC's uh, MCO Mainframe Cost Optimization page. Okay, so we will take just a few minutes to answer some questions now. Again, if you have a question, you can use the Q&A panel on the right side of your screen to send it in. Okay, first question. Um, if I am an existing customer of one of these products, how do I get the integration? That's a great question. Uh, we are delivering the integration uh, in July as uh, updates to the existing products. So in the case of BMC software, there will be PTFs released for Cost Analyzer and for MainView. In the case of Strobe, there is a Strobe uh, product release that will be available that includes the integration. All right, what is the cost of the integration between the products? Yeah, I wondered if someone would ask about that. This is, this is the most fun part, maybe, of the whole WebEx. We're providing this integration at no additional charge to customers who are licensed for Cost Analyzer or MainView or Strobe. So if you're an existing Strobe customer and you're, you're a customer who also has MainView, you'll get this integration just as a part of your, your licensed maintenance updates. All right. Um, is the July delivery purely BMC product code, or does it involve any updates to Strobe? Yeah, there, there are updates required for both uh, Cost Analyzer and MainView on the BMC side and uh, changes and updates to Strobe on the CompuWare side. How does the product get the SMS data? So in, I can in the case... Oh, I'm sorry, I, I could answer that from a stroke perspective. Um, we have a, a started task running that's uh, collecting SMF data on a 24-7 basis. Uh, alternatively, a user can run a batch job as well to, to get that data. 
Um, we're collecting the SMF 30 and the SMF uh, 70 records. Uh, and uh, I think CASI collects some SMF RMF data in a, in a different format. Right. From a, from a cost analyzer perspective, we're, we're processing, processing the data on a, on a daily daily basis or more, more often, depending on the volume of the SMF data that's being created by uh, in a given situation. But it will process in type 30s, um, type 70s, 72s, and 89s. So it's a combination of both the, the records that we require to determine the MLC costs, but also the, um, the records that we need to determine the workload drivers uh, during peak. Um, your demo showed hints at how to improve product code. Is that from a knowledge base that you provide or one that a user can use and modify? Uh, yes, that is a, a knowledge base that's provided with ISTRO. We call it our, um, our, uh, our module help database. Um, and users can actually add their own entries into that database. So if you know, um, such as your own code, you might have a, uh, a routine that does some sort of date calculations. You could add in a, uh, a help entry so that um, to tell users to expect high CPU because this is a date routine. Um, and then when the user saw that uh, module in their report, they'd be able to click on it and get that help. But we have um, 750 to, to 900 um, entries in our module help database, and this includes um, you know, generally all the, the IBM modules and a lot of the uh, ISV modules as well. And for about half of them, we provide um, hints for uh, reducing the usage of those. All right, I have a follow-up to that SMF question. Where does it store that SMF data that it reads? So from an ISTRO perspective, we store it in a database and the user selects the database they would like to store it in. That could be DB2, both for ZOS or Linux, Unix, Windows, and uh, or SQL Server or Oracle. Those are the three databases that we support. Yeah, for, for Class Analyzer, uh, we store the data uh, off the mainframe in the SQL Server database, so ubiquitous Windows uh, server. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. Um, will Kazi be enhanced to support IBM's new mobile pricing? Actually, mobility pricing, along with uh, IBM's newer price model, the co-located uh, application pricing, um, they're both under consideration to be supported in, in Cost Analyzer. Uh, to be frank, we haven't seen too many customers be able to exploit um, mo mobile pricing from a truly reducing their cost perspective. Um, it, it can be a rather complicated process to, for the customer, given how they've architected their applications over time to be able to parse out the mobility part of it, actually since for many customers, it's all integrated into the into into the application, um, but those that have managed to to parse it out um, have seen marginal benefit. Well, there was a trade-off on effort versus uh, versus money saved. Um, so we ha we have it on the roadmap as to be added along with the like I said the co-located application pricing. Um, so it'll be at a at a future date. All right, that dovetails nicely into the next question, which is. Are there any other CompuWare products that you're considering integration with? Uh, we, we are considering, the short answer is yes. Uh, we'd, we'd like to vet more of the use cases that we're exploring uh, by discussing them with customers before we, uh, before we actually offer up what those might be. So yes, we are, uh, and stay tuned for uh, at one, once we've done the July delivery, we can start talking about uh, maybe the next items on integration roadmap. Okay, great. Um, who do I contact to get more information on this? Do I contact BMC or do I contact CompuWare? Well, for the, uh, the, the integration partnership is a technical and marketing partnership. It's not a sales partnership. So. Uh, CompuWare still sells and services Strobe, uh, so you would contact CompuWare about Strobe, and for Cost Analyzer and MainView, you would contact BMC. All right, great. 
Well, thank you so much, gentlemen, for sharing your expertise with us today. Just a quick note that we will be sending out a link early next week to a recording of today's presentation to everyone who's on the call as well as to anyone who registered for this event but for whatever reason couldn't make it. So that concludes our webinar. I want to thank everyone for attending and have a great day.